Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining back uh, with this, uh, the last session of the day. Uh, we have, uh, since morning, came to know about what is eGov doing uh, in the urban local bodies digitization. How are we supporting e-governance with the help of the uh, digit platform? Uh, and we also went through the platform overview in terms of the architecture, microservices, et cetera. Now, uh, in this session, we'll cover the DevOps uh, by Nikesh Umritka, uh, where he will give a little bit of overview about the DevOps of the digit, uh, how do we deploy it, how do we plan for infrastructure, and how do we monitor the same. So uh, I won't come uh, in between you and Nikesh now, uh, just a couple of uh, house announcements. So please do leave your feedback after the session. Uh, and this is going to be a little long one, about an hour long session. So uh, we'll have q and in between. Please do post your question answers and uh, your questions in the q and a box. We can also interact over chat for any queries or for any uh, uh, any administrative questions that you may have for about the session. Thank you here. Uh, Nikesh, over to you. Okay. Thank you, Vipur. Yeah, hi, everyone. I'm sharing my screen. Yes. You able to see? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks everyone, and thanks for joining. When this session is going to be specifically for DevOps, uh, how DevOps work, what is the DevOps necessity, and how we set up our infra. This part will cover. We try to cover this uh, session in two parts. First is infra and infra sizing, and second part is deployment and monitoring. In each part, you can ask me question anytime. You can raise your hand. You can add your question in Q&A. We will take that question and we will try to resolve that. We will try to answer that questions. By since morning, you had a lot of session. I guess you already know the context about digit. What is digit and what is digit infra? So you mostly seen this kind of diagram in everywhere. So Ego also has digital side. This kind of diagram we developed. We develop this kind of diagram. This basically what it contains, what in networking point of view, VPC, that basically, and this diagram you can uh, idealize for any cloud, not for just AWS. These names are conventional are for EKS, AWS, but uh, in similar name convention, you can use for uh, Azure also. In Azure, instead of VPS, there is VNC. Similarly for Oracle, for similar for every other cloud and SDC also also has the VPN. So you can idealize same thing or everything. Uh, what we do here, we whatever you are seeing these models, everything will create using a Terraform. So you don't have to do anything manually. So what Terraform do, once you spin up, apply the Terraform, once uh, after that, it will create a VPC first. VPC means the uh, a word, virtual cloud, uh, private cloud. In that cloud, you can host your private network, public network, security group, everything, basically. And after that, we will create one private network and another is like public network. In after that, we will create EKS, we will launch EKS. And that EKS will create a, a worker node. And in that worker node, we can create multiple worker node. And in that worker node, we launch the instances, worker node instances. Is accordingly the count, whatever you are going to give in Terraform, it will launch that much. If you're giving the five node count, it will launch a five instances. We can scale up that according to our need. And EKS, EKS is uh, launched their own control panel and everything is managed by EKS and EKS launched their own uh, VPC also. So we can, you can see here, EKS has its own VPC. And here we have using the, the NAT gateway to route the traffic between private to public and internet gateway to connect that traffic to internet. Again, EBS volumes we use for the Kafka, Kafka, I hope you are seeing my able to see my screen. Okay. Uh, these volumes are EBS volumes. What we do uh, when you create a stateful state, like uh, for real time messaging, we need a Kafka. When 
one service like billing service your transaction happens the transaction has to pass from one service to another service one uh, consumer to another produce from producer to another consumer so we use the kafka to re for real time messaging what kafka do kafka carries that message and, he, and another consumer is consume that message so it will uh, delivered in real time so uh, for that keep the data continuously it should not be vanished it should not after restarting a pod it should not be gone so what we will do we make a persistent volume that persistent volume is nothing but the ebs and in that volume we store the all the topic related data message data the conf kafka configuration everything so it will be persistent zookeeper same with elastic search elastic search mostly used for the uh, dashboard purposes like kibana we use to show the dashboard to so visualize the our activities uh, and another thing is like a service log we use the fluent bit to gather all the the uh, service logs we have running the multiple pods like you are running the hundreds of pods there is definitely they are going to have a, a multiple logs on that node so what fluent uh, fluent bit do it gathers the all the logs and push it to elastic search after that elastic search from the kibana you can see that logs so for that we have infra part infra part is specifically we want to categorize both we don't want to mingle that's why it is a separate separate out elastic search whatever service related dashboard is going to be sit on the, the elastic elastic search data and elastic search data infra is going to only for infra part like zool event logs uh, service logs for that specific and we have s3 bucket here s3 bucket is like a for file store purposes there are going to be two s3 buckets first s3 bucket is a file store data whenever you launch one complaint yeah anything you are going to push any images anything while uh, doing the complaint it will go and it will sit in s3 bucket like similarly for uh, sdc situation it will be iscsi volume nfs volume and similarly when you uh, when you are getting ui part when you are developing your code you want to visualize some images you want to present that images that image should be publicly accessible yeah, it will be it should represent your website yeah your logo a state specific logo that also you can push it to s3 bucket and you make that url as a public and you can map that url to your code yeah you can map that url to ui part and anyway you, uh, once you create your cluster from cube cutter you can access that a uh, cluster you can access you can do your r and d you can check the log using cube cutter command everything you can put your r back rules if you want uh, other user to access only uh, get access only read only access you can using the r back rules you can create that yeah, role binding cluster binding we have there and mostly we use the kubernetes cluster only uh we uh, we can use another also like uh, frigates and everything we can use but uh, mostly we identify like kubernetes cluster and is cheaper than other services so and it's open source we can customize it accordingly and next part is the, the once all these things setups you deployed all your services there is a load balancer we use the nginx ingress as a load balancer what nginx ingress do when you deploy this service it will create a load balancer for you elb in uh, aws and that elb can be application load balancer network load balancer yeah different type of class load classic load balancer it is depend upon what you mention the mention that in your uh, nginx configuration it could be what uh, if it is you are using the network load balancer it will be it will manage traffic continuously without any issue and a classic is a, like a, uh, for day of qa environment but we recommended in production use network application load balancer and another is like a waf uh, this is the basically firewall that protect your uh, what traffics inbound and outbound traffics and for ss certificate we use the cert manager like morning i mentioned the cert manager what happen Uh, in our environments we don't want to procure certificate like it's a costly and we yearly we have to cost 
So what we do, uh, Kubernetes has provided a cert manager, different different cert manager. From that, we use the latest encrypt. What that latest encrypt do? It provides us the temporary 90 days SSL certificate and it will get automatically renewed by Kubernetes only. So we don't have to worry about that. It automatically, once it expires, it will renew that automatically without, you won't even feel that it is expired. And after that, once you got the domain URL, everything is configured, you have to add that entry into your domain registry. In our case, it is GoDaddy. We'll map that ELB ID with our domain. So whatever our domain, it will start calling our internal services. Here it is more about the load, uh, how we do the load balancing. User once in browser, even you hit that URL, internet calls the load balancer, and from load balancer, it backend it will call your uh, respective cluster or our service. Their engineers in case create a, a particular roles. We call that ingress rules. Uh, there are multi each service going to have their rules to route the traffic if you want to route the traffic to zool it will you can mention that and it will route the traffic to zool when zool why it will go to the your respective service means basically zool what it do it will authenticate your api calls everything after that it will traffic if and front end in the case of the front end you don't need a zool to authenticate so you can uh, in ingress rule you can mention directly go to the front end respective service if it is a citizen call go to citizen service don't by, we can bypass the zool here. So another part is uh, uh, here is uh, RDS. RDS is nothing but uh, but the, your this uh, Postgres. We in AWS it is called RDS. But it is a VM in SDC or any other, its name convention will be different, but it's a Postgres. It also sit in the private network. Everything, whatever you are seeing here, the VM worker node, everything is in private network. You cannot access that from the outside. You cannot SSH into that. RDS also, you cannot connect from the outside. We use the playground pod. We, in our clustered space, we have created one playground pod. From there, you can access, that helps you to access the, uh, the VMs and, database basically if you want to run any queries anything and all these things are connected to your eks clusters basically security group your vpc and your prior subnets everything is get mapped to uh, to your eks i will just show you the Terraform, how Terraform looks like. Oh, okay. If you see here, we have different different Terraform for AWS, Azure, EK, EKS and gk is nothing but the eks only and this is the for the quick start we have some quick start setups to if you want to fill the how uh, digit works you can start with the quick start setup that only gives the one model pgr model and but you can experience how digit works deployment traffic and you can create your own user in there also you can and aws basically we have main.tf output.tf and provider and variable.tf. In main.tf, if you see that we have the network, whatever you are seeing. And in Terraform also, we categorize as a models. Like if you see here, source we are defining here, go to when we are calling the network, it will go and spin up all the things under the network AWS model. This is nothing but that we have created a model, a different models, each, each uh, cloud-wise. Like if you go to the Kubernetes, we have AWS, Azure, and uh, GKE. If you go to AKS, AWS, there is a network model. Here we have another main.tf. Here, if you see all the VPC, subnets, internet gateway, whatever I shown you in the infra diagram, it will spin up for you. So you don't have to worry about 
it will create a private subnet it will create an internet gateway after that public routes to traffic route from the private to public everything is a part of this terraform and there are other things uh, that is the network part network part is taken care by the models and after that we create a db in db part we will use the as a default model of aws and there we have to mention the subnet private subnet we are just mentioning this parameters like uh, network model what will the and this is the instance class basically uh, the what instance size should be like it's uh, going to 3d medium means we can change that it is not a uh, permanent if you want to have a big size you can go ahead and change like similar with the version also 11.13 we are using if you want to use a 12 go ahead and customize that and use the 12 version we are using the class storage class gp2 similar uh, with the size also storage size also if you feel like you are going for production you need a bigger size bigger disk to store data go ahead and increase this one uh, this is the retention period uh, if you want if you don't want the retentional period backup policy you can disable this one you can set it to zero it automatically they stop creating uh, creating backup and here is the db username db password it will be at the time of spinning of the terraform it will ask you that questions what what, uh, what will the user you want what password it want and cluster name db name db name you can pass it from the variables environments and this is the eks cluster basically this covers the eks person and this is the working node uh, worker node group here we are mentioning and mostly we use the spot instances Spot instance gives the benefit uh, there are two part of instance basically in aws a spot a dedicated and resort one three one and uh, each one has their own specialty we use the spot because it is cheaper uh, um, almost 60 percent cheaper than the on demand but is the drawback is like a, uh, aws can pull that instance any time of point uh, these are the volumes uh, like uh, ebs volumes we are creating for the es master where we needed three ebs volumes what will be the size 10 gb will be the size what is the storage class it is the gp2 storage class similar for data zookeeper kafka we are creating all this using a terraform only whatever you are seeing here ebs s3 vms count eks uh, vpc subnets internet gateway net everything we are creating using this uh, terraform once the terraform are done then nginx you have to deploy that manually manually means from the release chart and after that you have to map your domain with that is the manual part only here any questions we can uh, let's okay i'm seeing one question no one domain cannot be used for uh, there is a, a catherine that is she asked uh, one domain can be used for one deployment more than one deployment no you cannot use the one domain for multiple domain uh, multiple deployments anybody has any question you can raise your hands also that is also fine vibor can unmute you so you can talk to me let's do the interactive one so i will also understand what you guys any doubt any things i will understand yeah shiva i have uh, you can unmute and okay, shiva uh, yeah you can you unmute him yes you are uh, telling that uh, kubernetes is providing the ssl certificate so is it the, the particular domain or uh, suppose if you want to make uh, subdomain certificate is it possible yeah kubernetes doesn't provide that uh, we have kubernetes has a facility a cert manager if you could see the cert manager
this basically what it do it helps us to get a certificate is there there are multiple like let's encrypt is there hashicorp is there there are multiple cert managers are there we use the let's encrypt to get a certificate and yeah obviously you can use for subdomain domain anything like here they are so the, the foobar dot is a subdomain and and again is the example.com is a domain yes. okay. I hope I, anyone has any questions okay let's move to another part we have another is like a infra sizing yeah, multiple when you are doing uh, we are set up in digit yeah any product like you are first question is how much node we need how much replica count we need like you are going to deploy one one application how much replica count should be there so we try to categorize all the things in excel sheet in nice way actually but uh, like our this core is nothing but the our core services whatever you are seeing here these are the core services uh, these are the business services municipal services we categorize that name wise is services front end services like if you see the uh, these are the citizen employee these are the dss dashboard these are the front end services and replica count we are mentioning here for radius we can use the one zookeeper you you have to three replica at least minimum this is the minimum count you have to have three replica count nginx ingress one cert manager one like similarly for infra part infra is yager we used to for a tracing like api call tracing you when you do the certain calls to api you need to understand uh, which api call consuming more time you need to identify that the yager helps us with that tracing kibana infra is for the like i shown you we have two type of elastic search elastic search is uh, elastic search data and elastic search infra the kibana infra pick the data from the elastic search uh, data infra so it is basically only for the service logs and zoo, uh, zoo events log similarly kibana is for product minio minio has uh, when we uh, previously what happened uh, we used to uh, we used only s3 bucket to host like we show shown you for file store askaji and uh, this one nfs so some of the sdc team they don't have the nfs uh, nfs also and they don't want to use the any cloud tools like yes they don't want to use so we come up with the mini tool we there is already tool is there we just uh, identify that tool in digit that what it do it has a functionality of s3 buckets all the api calls everything what however you do to uh nginx like locally how you push the images how you from the api call how you can push the images to s3 bucket similar way you can do it in mini also there also you need a three replicas of that mini minio and again minio use the your iskaji volume only to store persist that data and wordpress portal if somebody want to host a wordpress portal like we have our qa environment using dot digit.org this is our uh, citizen platform and but somebody want that they already have their wordpress site so they want to use that they can host it in our same cluster also similar to this this portal egov.org it is hosted on the citizen only this is wordpress website it is hosted on the kubernetes on the top of kubernetes similar like this one staging on there are other services core enc services you can keep a replica count uh, this is the minimum replica but at the peak hour you can change that replica count kubernetes feature is that kubernetes feature is like you can scale up and scale down any point of time as per your traffic consuming type if your load is uh, pod is getting restarted because of lot of traffic and it's not able to handle one pod is not able go and scale up that uh, that 
part also that is manual part and if you want that to automate that part there are another tools vpa hpa like vertical scaling and uh, horizontal scaling you can use that tools also ego also has that too uh, tools charts we already written for that you can just as it is you can use zool we use for the gateway every services whatever you are seeing here all the services get through authenticate through zool except except uh, front end services front end service doesn't have to go through the zools we don't want that to get authenticated every time if you see here these are the basic resource size if you uh, we try to categorize it by the ulb if you are going with the 1 to 15 ulb minimum requirement for the dev environment is like a, a 13 15 gb disk you need core 12 core unit and 43 gb unit so accordingly you use the whatever uh, node count you want uh, condition here is use a 12 count, uh, 12 cv cpu should be met the 43 gb should be met uh, like in uat it is like a 15 41 like similarly for if you are going with the 50 100 ulb that uh, cpu size and memory size this size will get increased accordingly and another is like a production wise like a production has a different count it get increased by the ulb size and another is like a, a production environment wise so you have we try to categorize more and more in detail here again if you are not feeling this uh, size is not enough you can any point out of you can scale up you can attach another node it will get scale up it's not like it's a permanent uh, for the launching time it will be like uh, you are when you are creating infra it will be the minimum value but once you start deploying all the services you are customizing all the service top of digit and you are start introducing new services it will not be enough that point out of you can go in back end you can attach another node will get uh, more resources it's not a blocker for anyone any questions on this one sizing uh please raise a hand if you have any question anything so we work can unmute you okay so let's move to deployment so basically deployment architecture is look like this one you have code you have written in your local you are using the visual studio to write that code to compile that code from your locally then you have to commit that code to any source code like a github git book a git bucket anything it's yours own that should be owned by you it should be if you want to public uh, public uh, git source it's okay use the, the public code source you have to push that after that uh, come to picture in digit pipeline jenkins pipeline uh, jenkins pipeline you can uh, build over there your product like if you see our is our jenkins we customize it according to our digit uses if you go to build you can able to see all the digit related service like digit dev we have the municipal service core services edcr front end and in that we have different different um, uh, services in municipal is a folder after that we have multiple in under the municipal is a umbrella after that we have uh, the, under that umbrella we have multiple services like hrms billing services if you have that and if you want to build that you can go with the build with parameter it will pick it from your github github repo you can mention it's not specifically you have to use the one branch only like it's going to always build from your master you can pick any branch any branch uh, like that branch is similar to whatever you uh, you have in digit dev see this, this is the digit dev repo this 
these are the branch whatever you are seeing here it is uh, getting filtered in the jenkins you can create your own branch if you don't want to merge with master just create your own branch select that and build it and once you trigger that it will give you the output like this one it will start building here it is pulling the pulling the your repo like it is pulling the digit devops repo here digit dev repo it will pull your code and after that it will it will, it will start building here it is if you see here uh, it pulling the git uh, this is the <clears throat> uh, sorry jdk builders it it is mapping it is compiling uh, it is your code accordingly maven builder we use the to build our jar here it's copying your code here it is copying your form.xml start.sh sr you are working directory everything it is copying to your uh, that image and after that it will start building your code once code is compiled everything is compiled it will build image and it will be, this image will get pushed to your uh, docker hub repository and once you have that image you can copy that image and you can just go to the deployment part and deployment you can directly deploy that to any environment i'm admin so i'm able to see all these things but probably you won't able to to according to your access whatever you are configuring you must have the only uh, two environments dev and qa you are able to see only that one and you can first paste that and uh, click on the deep build it will directly deploy this billing service to dev environment your dev environment and what is billing service this one uh, billing service is nothing but the whatever you have given this name here billing service we will pick the as image name of that so once integration part is this is the inter continue this is the integration after that delivery we seen and delivery once you got a image it got pushed to the docker hub docker hub you take that image and you deploy but then it is the cd part it will get analyze docker hub itself it will do the security fix security checks sometimes you have to enable that obviously but once you enable it will take check your images it is any drawbacks any security fixes has to done it will re release a report also accordingly this is another part like uh, locally you are developing code you are pushing into github then in jenkins you are building that and cd part uh, building that image and you are pushing to docker hub in whatever format it is it is all the er is uh, extension you are seeing and docker hub is not like that you can use only docker hub you can use any registry uh, if you don't want to use the docker hub uh, you want to use the aws ecr go ahead with the ecr it is not a we are not restricting people everywhere here also is jenkins if you don't want to use the jenkins you can use the github action github action also do the, the similar job for you it will build it and it will push to docker up and after delivery it will it will provide you the image name you can use that image name and you can deploy that to your cluster that cluster can be sdc any uh, on any cloud that part another what i want to show you like we use the helm chart you must have heard about the helm chart for now and we use the helm chart to generate our manifest when you talk about kubernetes uh, kubernetes kubernetes needs some uh, manifest to identify like deployment a stateful state it should be written in some format in manifest format uh, basically we use the yaml format but when you deploy that it will get converted to the json format and it will get deployed to your cluster that we use that artifact we use the helm chart helm chart basically manage that packaging and manifest a easier way if you see we have the business service these are the helm charts all the things if you go to the billing services uh, value.yaml we are, have this kind of values whatever you environment we want to pass these things its service whatever your services you are going to introduce if you are going to introduce new service 
uh, you have to create uh, its uh, pipeline and you have to create your helm chart also accordingly And our workflow is uh, workflow is accordingly. Uh, once you build, you deploy QA environment, and we have different different environment QA dev staging, and UAT. To QA basically, when you deploy something into QA, QA team will it's uh, that environment is specific for QA team only. That access is for QA team only. So QA team can test that, release that. Once they pass that image, they give that image to developer team. Developer, a uh, developer if there is any bug they revert back to developer team developer team fix that bug and again they give to qa team qa team is uh, fix uh, test again do the testing on that uh, image on that service particular service and they will pass it to uat team uat team is nothing but like a production we call that as a uat but it's our internal production uh, it is like a standardized once we have a release we will uh, do it uh, service by service we will release that and we will achieve that release one by one each service and once you uh, got all the release all the images everything uh, everything for that uh, release specific we will create create a release chart like if you are seeing here we have different different folder structure digit urban ifix mgram seva under the digit we have different different release charts like 2.6 2.2 uh, recently 2.7 in 2.7 if you see we have multiple images each release version specific if somebody uh, like a stress break they don't want to go with the 2.7 they want to use the 2.7 the here is a 2.7 all the digit specific reports all the model business model core model and then we have another type of models like if somebody want only trade license they can use they can uh, dependency what is dependency of the trade license is only core and business and these are the services for trade licensing they can deploy these services trade licensing model and they can go with one model to one day if they don't want like ego has more than 20 models you can choose what uh, state specific model you need like uh, some state need only waters water and ser water services trade license pgr fsm so they can deploy their own specific models here using this one. And we created a Golang script. Uh, like everything should go smooth and everything happen through this. We have a Golang script over written over here. So it manages the deployment part. So when you click the in, if you go to the Jenkins and you click the deployment in back end, what it will do, it will fetch the some code from the Groovy script and it will run the golang script in backend to pick that uh, to generate that manifest and call the your uh, deploy that to the your respective cluster let me show you that part please let me know if you are not able to see my screen I'm going to I'm taking one image here. What happened in backend? I'm just showing you that uh, what backend, how get it deployed, how manifest get generated.
No, if you think it's P means we are printing this. This is the manifest, Kubernetes manifest. It is in the YAML format, but it uh, written in the Helm chart. So it obviously Helm chart also generated a YAML format only, but it is easy to manage in Helm chart. So in if you see, this is the category. I'm talking about Kubernetes. Uh, Kubernetes need a services. This is the service manifest. All this stuff we have written in, written in the its specific uh, Helm chart in value.yaml. The go to the value.yaml. We have these values, environment, whatever you are seeing, the environment, service related stuff, ingress rule, if you want to enable or not, what will be the context for this service? DB migration, if you want to enable or not, true. These values are here. And you can override from the your qa.yaml. So here we are measuring the environment QA. Here we are measuring the environment QA. This is E nothing but the environment. What it will do, it will overwrite your value, whatever uh, you are mentioning. If you go to here. Let's pick any other service. Billing services. If you want to do replica account, you want to override. In value.yaml for that chart, we have must have mentioned the one replica account. If you want to override that, this environment specific, you can override it from here like two count we need. That count will be automatically get picked and it will get overwrite right here. This is the replica count. It will get overwrite right and it will scale up to two replica. This manifest basically look like this one. And once in backend also, it will generate this manifest, ingress rule, everything. And it will get deployed to your respective cluster when you do the deployment part. Any questions on this? A coexisting service like finance. Now we try to containerize it. We already containerize it, and we can use the same in same in that cluster also. Like uh, for Punjab. Uh, production, we are containerizing the finance. Now we don't need a different services, different uh, instances, like a dedicated one to host the coexisting services. Directly we can host that in our uh, broad cluster also. How we are deploying, I guess I already answered that. Deploying, you can deploy, there are two options. If you don't want to go to with Jenkins CI, any CI CD, just use our Golang. This is uh, how I'm showing you this using this command. You can deploy to respect your cluster. Uh, Sharuk, I hope you I got I answered your questions. You can raise your hands if you want to communicate or you want to explain more. In the context of coexisting, we have multiple, like previously we had a EDCR service, finance service as a coexisting. We converted that to containers. If you want to see that part, like uh, if I can show you that. This is Punjab production. like similar way we are running. You see this ego finance, it's coexisting service also. We, what we did, did we containerized that one. We just took a wild fly and we converted that wild fly into Dockerized image. 
all the things also you can find it in their repos are there in finance also we have different chart i guess it's municipal sir And working fine. It's not like we have any issues with the finance or thing. It's work as whatever we are using as a coexisting. It is work similarly. Anyone any doubts? Anything with the deployment sizing? Yeah, it is on Jenkins CI/CD pipeline. Okay, then we will move to the monitoring steps. So when you have this much complex, uh, complex structure, yeah, it's not complex, but it's uh, you have so many things like you have a uh, 200 services running on your cluster. You need a monitoring steps like Kubernetes. Kubernetes, uh, you need alerting. So whenever any resource, anything, any pod itself start crash looping, yeah, happen anything. Uh, it's a uh, starting getting filled like memory whatever you are mentioning like dedicatedly for one pod you are mentioning five mb 500 mb and it's getting filled pod is getting restarting because of that that memory issue so you need a monitoring tools to monitor that continuously and start giving you alert like that pod is crash looping that persistent volume if you see the car in kafka we are using the personal volume, is getting filled it doesn't have any space so for that we use the prometheus and grafana dashboard So this is our monitoring. You see the Kubernetes, we have two dashboards here. This is basically for one Kubernetes. You can see the all the nodes are here. So we can categorize by namespace also, like we have multiple namespaces. So, and containers, whatever your containers are running inside that. And it show you the nice view actually. What is the cluster age? What are the namespaces we have? What are the ports we are running? Like here one. Uh, 56 ports we are running. This 156 services are there currently. This gives the nice and nice whatever the uh, overview. Instead of to do uh, logging into the cluster, you are running some uh, commands. You will get a, a nice uh, dashboard over here. This is the Kafka. What are the topics? Basically, consumer groups. What are topic? What are the lags? Everything you can see here over here. What is the rate of transmission? How, how much time it will take to consume like a year 22 masses 222 masses get consumed in five minutes like similar for sms indexer this kind of persistent volume i'm talking about a persistent value here you can see the persistent volume size how much we used how much we filled everything So this is the Kafka. We use the different namespace. Like here, you are saying 97% is free till now for Kafka data. If you want to see the Elasticsearch, the similar way Elasticsearch, uh, we have ES cluster namespace for that. You are able to see you now Elasticsearch PVCs volumes 98.56 is free here namespaces wise cluster detail also you can see these are the dashboard you can customize any point of time you can create your own dashboard uh, we have two dashboards basically one is for kubernetes monitoring and one is for ingress ingress basically we manage the traffic from this monitoring like uh, how much a ws service when uh, when you are hitting to in um, ingress how much time it will take what is the latency everything you can monitor from this dashboard what is the concurrent user how many users are there everything 
according to this dashboard you can map we have another uh, dashboard called kibana we call logging there here here index is specific whatever water and storage if they have some messaging they want to show in dashboard here they don't, i guess they don't have dashboard okay they have dashboard here feature see we can convert this kind of dashboard out of this index nice viewing dashboard from this indexes For service log also you can do it you can identify instead of keeping what happened when the kubernetes node node as a spot instant drawback it will get terminated at any point on time so if you are pushing that data to the elastic search anywhere so it will get persist automatically and you can later you also you can by time date you can filter that and you can check that data and another we have the tracing like previously i told you you we use the yager for tracing these are the different different services we have whatever transaction happen it will come automatically that service if it is a billing service is doing the transaction for a, you want to see the for last hour find a trace it will start finding the traces from here you can identify what are the which services what what is that which query is uh, doing how how much time it will take to process that query everything basically it will give the overview nice overview any questions anything and monitoring uh sanjay asked some may i know what is uh, that tool you are showing what tool you are talking about sanjay Uh, can you raise your hand so we both can unmute you, Sanjay? You can unmute and talk. We both can you unmute him? Yeah, he. Yes, Sanjay, Sanjay. you may speak up your uh, question or clarify what tool you are referring to. hello yes sanjay yeah i have a question like uh, uh, to monitor that uh, i have an idea we are using azure monitor uh, like that uh, which monitor you have using to integrate that uh, ki nodes fail like that uh, we use the prometheus okay. and grafana dashboard uh, this is dashboard is basically grafana and yeah, for okay. this dashboard uh, how you integrate that uh, kubernetes how we indicate this prometheus what it do uh, like uh, that's usage report uh, you are showing in uh, kubana dashboard right okay kubana dashboard you are saying yeah Kubernetes is a different service. Like uh, in that service, it uses some uh, sort of uh, CPU and memory. Uh, the node nodes fail like that if you uh, if you integrated like some alerts. Yeah, that is uh, took care by the Prometheus. That I'm saying, uh, Prometheus. What when you have to set the alert management? Like we have alert managing here. If you go, we in integrated it with the Slack. what happen up uh, when you have any alerting system alerting like we use the alert manager tool that triggers the alert whenever you have any issue with your node 
uh, any pod anything okay it's okay. taking time okay just a second okay this is our internal There are too much. Okay, this is internal uh, infra alerts. If you see, these are the alert we are getting. We have set up this kind of alerts. So this is from the dev. What it's saying: your pod, this key clock has a restarting after every five minutes. This kind of logs alerting we will get. You can set up anything. Like if you don't want to use the with the Slack, integrate it with your mail ID. We use the alert managing tool. It is a Prometheus only provide that. Okay, here you have provided that uh, KI uh, Kubernetes service uh, related data. Yeah, Miss uh, Prometheus itself faced. Prometheus itself faced that data. We don't have to specify anything. Once you install the Prometheus in your uh, cluster, okay. like, uh, Prometheus operator, it will start fetching data. Okay, that agent uh, we are installing it in the nodes. Yeah. That node will pull uh, fetching data from yeah. that. Okay. Yeah. Basically, it will all the states, all the your resource memory, every data. It Prometheus will push. Uh, Prometheus will gather and it will show in. Uh, and Grafana is able to visualize that in dashboard manner. And another, we have alerting manager, alert manager. That alert manager triggers accordingly. Your, Okay. Uh, requirements whatever you set a context like alert manager you don't want everything to get alert you want only for the memory and uh, port related steps so just uh, categorize that set a rule and you can you can get alert accordingly okay. thank you anyone has any questions Mobile user, uh, Krishna asks one question, like mobile user access is available. Yeah, you can access this logging, everything you can access from mobile. That is not, it's authenticated to GitHub. We use the GitHub authentication. And transaction can be seen. Yeah, it transaction can be seen, you logging. This, whatever you are saying, it, it didn't ask me the any password or anything. Basically why? this authenticate to github teams if you from mobile if you have the github account login everything it it won't ask you the anything like you can access directly now if we uh, open this in incognito mode it will ask me the my github username and password once i fill that i will get authenticate it will ask code but that it will send to my mobile it will uh, work but okay, let me authenticate You'll get the access. So we don't want to uh, keep password-based things. Like we cannot. There are too many tools and too many things. We cannot keep everything as a password-based. So we use the GitHub authentication. Everything yes. So if you have you add that particular member into that particular team, like we have QA team. Like if you add if uh, Fresher got joined in QA team, he need access on the QA cluster. This deployment also. If you see this QA deployment, it's get authenticated team also, Jenkins also. This all the things is not a password base. It's a GitHub authentication we use. Like if somebody want to deploy something into the dev environment. If you add that people into the dev team, it will get uh, this dev access and it will automatically get uh, this uh, dashboard, Kibana infra, particular that environment specific thing access. Uh, uh, Nitesh asked the question, is it is necessary to use the both Kibana and Prometheus? See, Kibana is for your, it is not for uh, monitoring purpose. Prometheus is for monitoring purpose. Kibana is for the visualize, uh, 
for client purpose like your property tax you want to show people how much bill you paid how much citizen paid the bill that time kibana is useful you can show that in chart format yeah you can get data from your indexes and you can create your own chart own dashboard and you can show that to client prometheus are for only for monitoring purpose no it not uh, serve the same purpose prometheus it's the collect the data from your node your pod that stuff but kibana is only for the uh, get the data from the indexes live time like you if you do any transaction you paid a bill that transaction that message get to kafka topic and from the kafka it get to elastic search and from that elastic search kibana and kibana you can visualize how many clients like there are in peak time there are 100 every day 100 people are paying that taxes you can create a nice chart for monthly basis how much taxes are paid by how much users are paying the taxes or not can you show me the jenkins configuration to build and deploy we use the groovy script uh, if you go to our ci ops repo all the things all the configuration related things jenkins related it is set up here where groovy whatever the deployment whatever we are you are seeing here building a pipeline everything is written here in code so this is also public repository if you you want to customize that you can customize deployer also when the deployer this script is get used when you want to deploy some particular particular environment we have a hand raised from nikhil so you may unmute yourself and start your speak a question Uh, Nikhil, you have to unmute and then you have to speak. Are you there, Nikhil? Looks like that is not there. Anyways, uh, next is Dinesh. Uh, Dinesh, you can. yeah yeah hi nikesh yeah hi dinesh yeah actually my doubt is like uh, are you building the job and directly pushing using groovy script or uh, are you like uh, first you are writing script to build that uh, job and later you are pushing it you know uh, groovy script what it does na uh, it doesn't build a job job building when you trigger a build you need certain parameters right uh, how you have to build like you see here digit ui somebody is building now if you check here whatever you are seeing here this build and this uh, jobs everything you need to pull the repo everything that instructions written in groovy script so when this job digit ui job get triggered it will call that groovy script respective groovy script and accordingly whatever we have written in that groovy script it act like that like in digit pipeline deployment if you go to the this one build a pipeline what it will do it will it will first create a container and after that it will start creating this pipe uh, this services like version git it will pull the uh, github repo okay and and then it will start creating the images if you see the images here we are mentioning create images and what images what should be the format a repo name uh, image name after that uh, branch name and after that uh, commit value and the build number in last so all this logic we have written in code yeah. this whatever you are seeing here yeah. whatever happening in this build the, this logic we have written in the groovy script code is nikesh anyone any doubts mm -hmm. 
if anybody no one has any doubt before we can conclude then uh, i done all the questions i think the questions on the q and a chat box has been also been answered so uh, let me just clear those and if there is no and there is no further hand raise as well so i think this is a good time to conclude uh, so thank you everyone for participation uh, just one reminder about leaving your feedback uh, before you go out uh, before you you know close the window uh, at the end of the session you will be redirected to a feedback form it will not take more than 30 seconds for you to fill but help us in future sessions thank you thanks a lot bye thanks guys for joining